Uh, we've been talking about the situation where uh, we don't have this full information. In other words, some of these types um, for other players, for other agents, um, we don't really know. So this kind of information, um, um, although we don't really know, but we can actually pro pro uh, having a um, um, probability estimation about it. In other words, using sort of a probability to represent our uncertainty uh, about those information. And then we can create this uh, so-called Bayesian game. In other words, that uh, you make use of Bayesian inference and construct this sort of a posterior estimation condition on whatever information we have. And then based on that, um, the reward, the payoff would be expected value. And then we basically, for each individual player or agent, they try to maximize their own sort of, uh, um, and their own um, expected payoff uh, to find out their, you know, optimal action. And typically, mix um, a mix of action, and uh, a good example is auction. Right, we have uh, multiple bidders, and there's one single item we want to sort of uh, um, uh, want to bid, and then the intrinsic value, the hidden value, and um, is the um, is basically the um, intrinsic value. So every everybody have their own sort of uh, assess uh, assessment evaluation about the value of the item they tend to bid. But that information is hidden, uh, is private value. Everybody own their own value. They don't really know others, but only they all know their own. And so in this case is um, um, VI, right? The VI here is uh, the intrinsic value for each of the agent, in this case, indexed by I. Then and for each of the um, bidders, they, they, they try to come, come in with sort of a strategy. This strategy is um, in the form of this um, bidding function, right? This bidding function, and it, which would specify how much you want to bid um, given your intrinsic value of VI. So in terms of how to come with bidding, you know, we're talking about various, uh, depends on, you know, um, kind of what kind of auction mechanism uh, this um, bidding uh, function would be, uh, you know, different. And this, as we sort of discussed that in this um, first price auction, right? First price auction, then um, the, the bidding is a sort of a linear function, um, linear term function respect to this um, intrinsic value. And actually in the very simple cases we showed like in a very, like a, it's a very simple case. I just want to show that. Yeah, very simple case. It's a, it's a, it's a for example, in the second price auction, in the truth telling, like a, I only bid my intrinsic value uh, is dominant strategy. We actually do this uh, uh, simple proof um, for that. Uh, so the simple point is nothing but just sort of a, you know, uh, 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 discussing all very false cases show that there's, they have no incentive to deviate from telling the truth. Um, so this is sort of a second price auction, but first price auction uh, is actually not. Uh, we show that um, basically uh, we see with a simple calculation, I think that we'll see just a moment. Uh, using the slide, the PPT is quite uh, slow. Um, yeah, so we did this so that um, if we have two bidders, uniform distribution about this intrinsic value. So the knowledge about this other people's uh, intrinsic value is, is uh, basically say uh, uniform distributed. Uh, in that setting, we showed that if um, the opponent bidder two is say I'm gonna bid half of my intrinsic value. That's my uh, bidding strategy. Then my best response would be also I would bid half of my value. So this is done by looking at calculated expected uh, utility. 
expected utility and then to basically say because this is very simple case we can write it down analytically in terms of expected utility and you take a, a maximum respect to your bidding um your, your bids and you can actually find that if the bids is uh, same as you know half of your intrinsic value and that give you the um, maximum value and that basically shows that if the component are beating half and you don't want to deviate from that as well. So in fact, in the general case that um, one can derive that this, um, when we like say general case, you have a n number of bidders, then you would have, uh, your bidding strategy would be, you know, like this, is the um, linear, linear function of this uh, intrinsic value, then it's a uh, Nash equilibrium. And you can see that when n equal to one, uh, sorry, n equal to two, it's, it's basically half. And um, so it's also efficient because then, um, although it's not too for telling, right? You actually bid in the first price auction, you actually bid slightly lower uh, than your intrinsic value, right? You, you tend to bid lower. And the, in terms of how low it is, it would depend on how many um, bidders in the market. Right. I think we had a discussion in the very beginning about um, the, the, our guess, what you know, what kind of what's going to happen in the first price auction. So it, indeed, the case actually is a you 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 wouldn't tell in the truth, but it's if efficient in the sense that um, you all obviously would give the item to the one who has the highest intrinsic value because this is sort of a you know a monotonically increased. Um, so it turned out, in fact, in the general um, distribution, because of the discussion we had just now, and, and also last week was, uh, you know, assume that's uniform distribution. But in fact, it doesn't really matter um, the general, it doesn't really matter what kind of distribution, what kind of belief you have with, with the others, the distribution of other people's, uh, you know, intrinsic value. So we can actually write it down. In fact, uh, the, um, and um, or before we actually do that, we can, uh, to, you know, some notation, which basically say we have this cumulated um, density function, any cumulative density function of uh, this uh, intrinsic value of, let's say, other components. So in this case, you have n number of bidders there for uh, n minus one are the number of components. Just consider that say you are one of these. Uh, uh, and we also think it's a symmetric game. In other words, they are um, they are the same in terms of you know intrinsic value. Uh, we will not distinguish between you know an, an arbitrary um, bidder. And then we can basically say this max and minus one, meaning that I would getting the uh, components maximum value from component. Um, so the conclusion fact is that basically. You're gonna bid is this if you if you were the highest, that's that's basically the condition, right? Condition one, you, you were the highest, and you would obviously bid the maximum and minus one. What does it mean? I would I would just outbid a little, outbid a little the um the maximum value from uh, and minus one components. So the price, the first price auction, you said, I just outbid the others a little bit. And then that's the expected value of that is become my, um, you know, uh, it become my, my bidding, become my bids. And so that's basically say each bidder will bid the expectation of a second highest bidder's value, given that the fact that I, that I win. And the out B, the, the B function, as I said, is shifting monotonically uh, increased respect to intrinsic value, so it's uh, efficient. So, and then you could actually write it down that in the some uh, simple case, uniform distribution, and then sort of the bidding become uh, go back to the uh, formula that we wrote just now. So, how we can show this is indeed the case? What we can looking at is that the suppose we're looking at a simple case that. The bidding is between that and one. It's just for the you know sake of discussion, uh, but you can obviously um, generalize to any any bidding range. Given this value, bid I must submit a sealed bid bi. 
So, in fact, what you want to try to optimize is this uh, bidding function that, in fact, is a not the like a typical optimization, but the functional optimization. You do you need to find a function, you know, to fulfill that kind of uh, maximization. So it might be in, uh, heavily involved in math. So in, instead, we can actually looking at from uh, uh, you know different perspective to looking at the proof. So, but what we're looking at here is that um, bidder with highest value will place higher bid. So bi is the strictly increased function. So this this function basically is st strictly increased function, and and is mapping from zero one to R plus in other any you know higher number. Uh, and also we consider that's another sort of, uh, uh, in fact, this is sort of assumption is that the bidder are symmetric, right? In other words, that um, we, 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 we don't, everybody be given the same sort of a value, let's say they will be the same, right? So in other words, that basically the B function, we will have um, a single function apply for everybody. So this is sort of a symmetric uh, game. So let's consider these two cases, what's gonna happen. So let's also, we can write it down this payoff. And um, let's just for the, um, uh, for the sake of discussion, we just consider, uh, you know, bitter one, from the bitter one's perspective to look at the problem. But you could, uh, this could be generalized to any bitter because it's a symmetric case. So, the payoff is that if I first price option, if my bid is higher than my opponent, the highest in my own, from my opponent, then I would bring the auction and I would pay the uh, the bid, right? Because first price auction, I would pay to what I what I bid. And this is sort of the intrinsic value you got. So therefore this is your payoff. And if any bid, if I bid is uh, smaller than um, these second highest, um, bit then obviously I didn't I won't, won't win the game uh, the, the the auction therefore I won't have any sort of um, uh, payoff zero, zero payoff so then you can write it down this in what situation you're gonna you're gonna win right there this is probability I'm gonna higher than any uh, the the highest second highest bit uh, you can actually can write it down I will high my bit will be higher than any of them. Okay, so the, therefore the optimal the bidding function should maximize should maximize this this expected payoff. So because as I said, it's a function. Therefore, you wanna it's, fu it's functional optimization. But you can actually looking at it from a, a different way. If you think about this, the bidder instead of instead of sort of a, say uh, I'm not thinking about the B. I'm really thinking about that. Suppose the um, um, suppose that we have this bidding strategy, okay, but we provide a different a true value to it. So in other words, that suppose bid I cannot attend the auction, then he send his friend, one of his friends to bid for, for them, right? And the speaker know the optimal bid star, okay, but does not know VI. So in other words, that they know the B, uh, the bidding function, but it doesn't really know the the true value. And then you provide the one with a different sort of value. We'll see this different value would be exactly the same as the true one. So the bidder would tell his friend that the value X and want, want him to submit this. Uh, so instead of true value, I basically give arbitrary X. We'll see what happens. Um, and then this expected payoff in this case would be, uh, you know, as we specify, you know, this is our, my, uh, my, my, uh, sorry, my bidding, my bid value would be, you know, higher than any of these others. And then because it's sort of a monotonically increased function, um, then we'll basically say my value, my intrinsic value will be higher than any of the others. And then you can write your own because you just so say you have this cumulative de density function f, and because it's for n, um, sorry, m minus one number of uh, uh, other 
opponents um, agents, not other agents. Therefore, um, this is a power of n minus one. This is cumulative dynamic function. Okay, so then the expected field of must be maximized, right? The expected field we, we, we want to do is that we want to make sure that will be maximized. In what situation will be maximized? We basically want to show that in expect people must be maximized when reporting his true value vi to his friends. So in other words, that we want to really show he said um, x is equal to vi. So how we make sure that would happen is um, is a situation that we would make a differentiation uh, or we'll take a derivative of the expected value uh, respect to x. And the resulting um, this derivative must be zero, right? When x equal to vi. Because you have to tell in the truth because that's the optimal bidding function. If you're not telling the truth, then it's the b theta is optimal. That, that b, sorry, the b star would want to be the optimal bidding strategy. So that's the rationale behind it. So that becomes the condition of this um, B star. And so you can take this respect to Xi and you make them equal to uh, Vi. Okay, then you can come in with uh, the final um, condition for this optimal B star, okay? And that is nothing but what I just said, is that this is are the situation that you, because uh, the cumulative density uh, function, this is basically say, uh, my bidding would be the highest. In that situation, I would basically expect, uh, uh, calculate the, uh, the uh, expected value of a second price, uh, second, second price, I will beat that value. So in equilibrium, each bidder beats the expectation of the second highest bidder's value, condition on uh, they winning the, the auction. So wh what does this mean? That, that means is that uh, if my value uh, is highest among all the bidders, and then in this symmetrical equilibrium where the strategy is uh, you know, all increasing, then it's really sufficient for me to just outbid this opponent. I just outbid the all, all the opponent, then uh, I will be fine. So, so that's why you see that the first price auction tend to you know no, lower a bit, um, a, a bit lower than your intrinsic value. So, as uh, so, this is sort of a exercise. Given the time, I think you can have a look. Uh, when you have time, I also provide the uh, solution for that. So this will give you answer to that. I'm gonna speak this. Um, okay, so you can also same thing. You could actually have, um, do the same trick for um, sex price option. And you can say that if you bit lower than your, uh, uh, you know, true, true, if you bit lower than your true value, and you can find, in fact, the the value of this expected payoff would still increase as you, you know, reach to VI. Equally, if you uh, bit higher than your intrinsic value, you can find the same thing. And then basically, the uh, uh, truth for telling is the uh, Bayesian Nash equilibrium strategy. So, this, as we um, and stand so far, the second price auction in the expulsion, they are equivalent strategically, and they're also efficient at the first price and Dutch auction, they are also equivalent. Is it true for telling? Uh, probably not, but efficient? Yes, it's efficient. And also interesting things is that um, you find, um, although they are, you know, um, one is truthful for telling, another is not, but if you're looking at expected revenue, right? In fact, uh, they are same. So there's a revenue equivalent sort of principle in mining, um, you know, auction format. That 
uh, is really the one of the game, you know, making design really is to study all this property. Um, so we're not good through, but if you're interested in that, certainly grab some of this uh, magazine design, you know, book then to, to really to understand that. Okay, so what is the reserve price entry fees? Is that um, from this auctioneer's perspective, um, they can actually introduce these um, reserve price to make sure that everybody has to, you know, bid um, higher than that. If it's not, then um, I would charge that minimum bids. So that's the reserve price. And also entry fee is that um, uh, those bidders who enter, they have to pay these fees in order to participate those those um, those auction. So this too, you can think about this as uh, additional money, right? These um, auctioneers might wanna want to collect, but at the same time also. Um, um, block some of these um, bidders because they probably don't really want to participate now anymore because they have extra charge. Um, but overall, these two are, can be considered as a sort of a parameters. You can, you can optimize your, your auction. Therefore, you could maximize your expected payoff. So, and so this is basically the, um, uh, without further duration, I think that I put up reference, reference here, you can have a look into not proof. So if you consider this two and um, reserve price and entry fee, and for example here, and for example here, and you would have a, a different some kind of bidding strategy that have impact on the, you know, bidders bidding strategy. This is sort of the impact on that. And therefore the revenue would be are different and um, people actually show that and um, you know this would be the optimal that entry fee um, that you would uh, that you think uh, to maximize the expected uh, expected uh, uh, payoff. So this is sort of a uh, um, the so-called optimal auction. The goal is try to really from the auctioneer's perspective try to maximize that to see what they do. So we only here discuss four um, auction, and also in, they are all in a very simple setting. But in practice, is is much more complex uh, than that. And also, we have very limited. Uh, we have a, a, you know a quite strong assumption in terms of this um, intrinsic value. We consider they are you know. Uh, independent dispute, but in fact, in uh, some of cases, like for example, common values, uh, the uh, typically you have one common value for that, and everybody estimation is really uh, a, a sort of a, uh, some uncertainty associated with that uh, common value. In that case, if you win that auction, then maybe you are the, the one that who overestimate the value of that item. Therefore, it probably wouldn't be good that you, um, you know, bid uh, too high. So there's a um, particular um, auction, studied auction based on that common value kind of thing, then you probably wouldn't have that conclusion that we just discussed. Like for example, you have this uh, intrinsic value. They are correlated in the sense that you have this common value and whatever you got is basically this noise version of that. If if this we are correlated, the 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 condition, sorry, the, the conclusion we got uh, from those those four um, auctions might not necessarily be whole. So so that actually open that is the, another type of this um, uh, you know results from from the auction theory. So. What I just what I want to say is that this auction theory is really just uh, what I we, we talk about today is just a uh, uh, very basic um, models that um, in auction theory and mechanism design there are a lot of um, you know interesting um, happening in that field. Um, so this is a reference that uh, if you are interested in uh, um, auction theory and also and then this is I think one of these. Uh, uh, small book you can have a look and, uh, and so in fact in economics people talk about this quite a lot so these are the ones that you, you you can looking at from the economics perspective 
And also we've been studying um, on auctions and particular advertising. So if you're really interested in um, practical application of some of the te te techniques, uh, this is a paper you can actually start with as well. 